Welcome to a Skyrimatic podcast where I will discuss my adventures and misadventures through Skyrim. Join me. Add your stories. Add your tales. Let's uh, let's get into this thing. Uh, welcome back. Skyrimatic Podcast. I believe it's 131, if I'm not mistaken. Joined by uh, Juan today. Hello. And Victor. Hey, how you doing? And Colin. He might be muted, is he? No, he's not. Colin. Good evening, guys. <laughs> I'm here. I'm here. I wasn't sure if you were still muted or not. It's like, I'm going to say his name and he's not going to be able to say anything. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, we're going to get into a couple different things. Uh, pretty much anything Elder Scrolls related. Uh, we have some Legends feedback. Um, we can ask about uh, what's going on in ESO, Skyrim stuff, uh, plenty of stuff going on. So, uh, let's see. Uh, first, what's everybody been playing? Anybody been playing anything? <laughs> I've been playing some Legends, and I've been playing some Skyrim Special Edition. Oh, um, nice. I've stopped playing... Um, ESO at the moment. I pop in every Saturday just to pay my uh, trader guild dues and uh, do my horse. Um, but other than that, I've just been in and out of it for about 10 minutes. Uh, as soon as I started a new Skyrim playthrough, so it's kind of on the back burner. Nice. Yeah, I've been doing ESO and uh, Elder Scrolls Legends. So... That cool. one's kind of interesting. Well, it's good that we have feedback on it. I have I've tried Legends. Uh, I have never been a uh, like a card game player, so it's so weird. I was lost <laughs> as hell, and I was like, I don't have time to figure this out right now. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much where I ended up too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I tried it. I tried that. I tried Hearthstone. I tried all of those, and uh, my kids are all big, uh, you know, card game players, but. I can't. I couldn't do it. So I've just been playing Skyrim and a few other things, Wolfenstein and, mm. and a few other games. But uh, um, I must have tried to. I've recorded uh, numerous things uh, of my Skyrim gameplay, but I haven't put any of them up on on anything resembling YouTube or anywhere else. So one of these days I'll get around to editing some of that crap, even more, even some more mod talk episodes. I just never. Oh, nice. Never uploaded them. So, oh, speaking of mods, um, did you listen to the last? Uh, I think it was the last character crusade. No, I, I, uh, I sort of for this one. It's also it's been summer, so oh yeah, yeah. Sometimes <laughs> a, me, a, like a an obsessive hiker. I'm, I'm like, I'm out hiking every every afternoon, almost every afternoon, and and then I'm doing ten to fifteen miles a day on the weekends. So, so that that's kind of, and then when I get home, I'm it's like, you know, like. Burn. okay time for bed yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. or time to watch a couple episodes of game of thrones and that's it so, yeah yeah so uh so yeah it's been um so yeah and my podcasting podcast listening has suffered as well because i can't really listen at work a whole lot and i don't have a an hour-long commute anymore so <laughs> oh that's well that's uh, a good thing <laughs> yeah yeah it's good and bad but uh so yeah I've, I've kind of fallen off off the the radar even though i'm still supporting them uh, i haven't listened to much so so what happened oh well it was essentially uh, they were and i think it was the last one it, it may not have been but they were just talking about how what's kind of happened to the modding community since se came out oh yeah and how maybe that uh adding that into it has led to this like almost slowdown and breakup of the modding community like yeah it, seeing it not as much happening and maybe because it's divided between se and legacy edition and and how That's all funny. that works interesting because i the the uh the second uh, un uh, unpublished mod talk episode that i recorded i talked a little bit about that too and i had a completely the opposite opinion on it i mean if you look at the at the number of, at the, I mean, I, I look at the Skyrim mods on the on the legacy side almost every day. I, I run through the new ones and, and stuff, and and that's still a constant feed of, of new mods. Some mm -hmm. of them are are quite good, um, 
and interesting stuff. And I look at SE and it's just not, there's not much happening there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, although a lot of things you can port from one to the other, um, particularly textures and things like that, it's not that hard to port them. Um, so a lot of people are doing that on their own. Um, For some of them, they're, they, they almost have to make them three times though, right? Yeah, because if it if it involves an ESP, then then yeah, it has to be recom re, I, recompiled is the wrong word, but it has to be run through TS five edit and and all that. And uh, a lot of the the bigger new mods that that have come out in the last say month or two uh, have SE uh, versions though. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of small stuff that that just keeps popping up on the legacy side. I just think it's still if you're if you're really into mods, the legacy is still the the version of the game to play. Um, it's just you know, SE is so much more stable, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know it just doesn't crash nearly as much, um, and uh, and it looks nice. <laughs> it does. It, um, even vanilla, it looks good. It, yeah, yeah, it really does. So, uh, right, but there's no, a new. I'm sorry. But what I meant, what I meant was that they, it's if they, if it's something that they can do, they they have to do it for three different platforms. Well, yeah, consoles mm -hmm. and and yeah. uh, um, and SE, et cetera. And I haven't been right. paying attention to the console side of things at all. Uh, <laughs> so pretty much what I what I said in that in that mod talk episode was, look, I'm going to try to record some of these. I you know, and if you hear this, it means I uploaded one or two of them, <laughs> but. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I'm only going to be talking about Legacy Skyrim because I just don't have the time or the inclination to to check into modding on any other platform because it's the only one I right. play the, it's the only one it's the only one I play the game on. And uh, even though I pop into SE once in a while just to fart around, mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't really pay attention to the mods over there until SKSE comes out, and then likely if it ever does, uh, there's going to be a big explosion. Um, yeah, and. Uh, I mean, you know, um, uh, Chesco finally came out with his, you know, his last seed. Um, he's calling it the sort of the prologue edition. Um, that's his needs mod. Um, it's not fully functional yet, but it's it's working. And I don't remember. I don't know, Colin, if you've looked around the SC uh, side of the Nexus. Uh, I don't remember if he brought that out for SC or not. I don't think so, because because it does require SKSE and Legacy. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if he brought out a an SE version of it. Um, no, I'm going to uh, try and um, cause I get all the achievements on my SE uh, version. Okay, yeah, Makes that's sense. what uh, my playthrough is. So I haven't, uh, yeah, I haven't even looked at the mods. I don't think I'll ever mod it I, either. I think I'll just. I'm still having problems with my legacy version, um, being really extra long load times. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've had to delete it out. So uh, the last time I deleted it out, I forgot to delete it in my games folder as well as the Steam folder. So I think it, I think it kept some of that. So I had to delete it again and then reinstall it again. So yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So the, but there there have been some really cool little mods that have popped up uh, in the last couple of months. There's a really nice new grass mod, and I believe that's got an SE version. It's called Vidos Broom or something. It sounds very Swedish, whatever it is. But, hmm. uh, it's really good. Um, and uh, there's a new... I, don't, I think everybody who's messed around with mods in Skyrim at all knows about a mod called the Notice Board. Um, and there's a new one called Missives, which is kind of like an addition to that by a different author, which is kind of cool. And it's just ways of getting random quests, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, so I, I went down a rabbit hole of those. Uh, one of my fits and starts creations. Uh, just <laughs> if you ever think of using a, a mod called, uh, I think it's called for, uh, Forgotten Dungeons. Um, uh -huh. It's uh, it's been around for a long, long time. Uh, but just be, uh, I I started into this thing level one and a half or two or something like that, thinking, oh, it's just a short little quest for one of these notice board things, and it's this forgotten cave somewhere on the edge just south of solitude that turns out to be this falmer thing and it goes on and on <laughs> and on and just it was just excruciating you know i finally just said 
fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> Dumped the whole thing. It was terrible. So yeah. uh, seems like anything bigger than like Black Reach is just too much. Well, yeah, and I think modders get modders like that get carried away. You know, yeah, they just sort of just oh, let's add another tunnel there and another tunnel there, <laughs> another another yeah no yeah yeah. So anyway, uh, well, that's the extent of my Skyrim playing lately. Yeah, I've uh, I've, I've played a couple mods recently, um, quest mods, you know, but uh, it was uh, let's see, Valley of Peace I talked about last time. Uh, I kind of, I, I think I, I, I probably like sixty five, seventy percent of it I did, and then I just uh, kind of moved on from it. It's got some glitchiness to it, you know, some things aren't quite right. Uh, there's no map, which is really, you know, which, which is fine. You know, you kind of find your way around and all that, but it can be a little cumbersome at times trying to figure out where you are. And there's just like so many Daedric weapons in the thing. It's insane. Um, but uh, overall, it looks good. It's a fun little quest line. There's a bunch of different stuff. There's a player home, obviously. And um, there's an entrance and exit from Skyrim. So you're not like stuck there once you get through the quest line. Oh, that's good. Yes, and then you know, there's some parts where you take a boat to an island and, and things like that. So there is some fun stuff in there. It's uh, it's worth checking out and playing. Um, but I was when I was, I got to a point where I I just couldn't find stuff, and I I was getting a it was getting frustrating. So I was like, I moved on, and then uh, I hopped into Grey Cow of Nocturnal, which I've been enjoying quite a bit. It's uh, you know, obviously Grey Cow from um oblivion if you remember that quest line from the thieves guild mm -hmm. and uh even has the boots of spring heel yeah yes yeah, spoiling everybody uh <laughs> for a game from whatever 11 years ago whatever it was um <laughs> and, and uh yeah the boots of spring heel jack are in it um but it's a fun it's mostly puzzles and sneaking which i really liked a lot uh it fits the theme obviously of being thieves guild and I just made it to the Alkir Desert, I think. Um, but, uh, you know, it gives you... Oh, there is one part where it actually recreates the beginning of Oblivion, which is nice, which is really interesting. Um, That's cool. Yeah, and it's... So you're actually going into Cyrodiil and and seeing different places. It's a it's a pretty pretty cool mod. Um I guess I'm pretty far in it. I don't actually have the Cal yet, and I played quite a bit. It, it's extensive, to say the least, but I haven't run into any, like, bugs or glitches or anything, no no graphic issues or anything like that. Uh, it's been it's been pretty smooth, so... Uh, yeah, he's it, a good modder. I forget, uh, is that Train Wiz or who who brought that one up? But whoever it is, it's pretty experienced, and, and it's been it's been updated numerous times so it's it's a it's a pretty stable mod yeah really stable really nice looking um you know i i just i haven't had any issues with it at all it's it, and if you're into sneaking and and want to go through like a whole thieves kind of thing it, it's definitely a nice add-on for that and really really fun to get into cool so colin how's your uh, vanilla se play going and it was going really well, uh, or it is going really well. I, I was like, uh oh, was uh oh. <laughs> yeah, well, I had a little issue with myself. Was it last night? I think. Yeah, last night, I was uh, I was hurrying along a little bit too much. Instead of um, sort of like you know just trotting along with it, um, so I, it's um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, it's. Uh, my character is a Breton, um, and he's concentrating in um, conjuration, obviously, alteration, and illusion. Um, he's 100 in alteration and, what you may call it, uh, conjuration, and 98 or something like that wow. in illusion. And he's like 15 in one-handed and <laughs> like 20 in two-handed and like really low hasn't done any of that but he's like uh 70 in archery because of the bound weapons oh and you right. know how yeah. you know how the bound weapons when you use them and you you never take the perks from to make them powerful and that those perks are awesome they are the soul yeah, yeah the soul trap is a little like you know it doesn't go it doesn't stay on for very long it can only be for like about 
10 seconds or something like that mm-hmm. before it wears off. Um, but that um, was a turn raised on dead and uh, was it sent back um, Atronach back to oblivion perk. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was it you get to, when you're fighting dragon priests? They have command Daedra, so they can take control of my uh, Atronox and my Daedra. But if I just hit him with the bound bow, they just de- disappear back hmm. um, to the planes, and then I just summon up another one and let him wail on him until he gets enough magic back to take control of that one again. Um, so I've been doing that, and that has been a lot of fun. Uh, and as I said, I've been using all my foreknowledge. Uh, and sometimes I fall into the, the, the same old trap of where I'm in a quest and then I'll sort of like try and role play about how I would find this information. And I've got to sort of like kick myself and go, no, you already know that. So you don't have to think of a reason <laughs> of why you would know it. It's you, you idiot. So, uh, I could just sort of like, you know, walk into places. So I don't like, you know, try and like you know stand in a corner where i know the enemy could never be able to hit me because it's a computer glitch but i use a thing of like you know while well, i know where that enemy's going to be so i can go in and sort of like stand here so like you know he'll walk into my room or he'll you know it'll take longer to get me so i can kill him so i don't use game glitches i use sort of like just the foreknowledge that i have mm-hmm. and um that's been a lot of fun he done he hasn't done the main quest yet he hasn't <laughs> He's level 40-something, I oh. think. And he hasn't been to Riften, <laughs> nor, <laughs> nor wow. Markarth or Morthol. Wow. Uh, he's, he hasn't done the main quest. Um, he's only done the Mage's Guild quest. And he's on Soul's Time at the moment, halfway through the Dragonborn quest. Because <laughs> he, he, he went up to the Greybeards, and all he did was get all the Fusrodar, told uh, Delphine, I don't want anything to do with you, and then went up, got the last word of Fusrodar, and then what's it, he done Arneil Gaines' little quest, which is awesome. I love that quest. Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. And then when I finished Arneil Gaines' quest, then I got I hopped on the boat and went over to Solstein. Been playing through that, and I just love Solstein. And obviously, I said on the last episode I was on that I wasn't going to get Lydia early on Literally, got Lady as my fellow at like level five. <laughs> <laughs> yes, totally went the opposite way with that. Uh, uh, yeah. so like, you know, I just couldn't resist it. So, um, so I just got uh, Lydia running me. She's got uh, Zarkrosis's, um Oh yeah, it? the mask. Uh, yeah, the Dragon Priest mask. So it makes her fifty percent resistant to uh, shock. Um, but she does 24% more damage with shock as well. So I gave her uh, an ebony sword and then enchanted that with shock. Uh-huh. And I've given her, um, what you would call it, a staff of summon storm at Chinook and a staff Just... of uh, thunderbolts. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> flying around doing like like F tons of damage with uh, loads of shock spells. <laughs> she looks like a better sorcerer than I am. <laughs> <laughs> So you're liking uh, going with the regular uh, perks and all that kind of stuff. It's it's feels fresh again. Oh, definitely, because I hadn't because I've been playing basically ESO nonstop for the past few months. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't been playing Skyrim. I haven't played it at all. So, you know, I still have a lot of like you know, it's like I get, hate these people who who come on the show and say stuff like, "Oh, I I never forget that." remember that quest and i forget half the stuff and uh, <laughs> all that stuff you know who you are <laughs> and it always annoys me because i sort of like walk into a dungeon right that guy's gonna stand by that door <laughs> if i open that door I'll pull that out. i already know like halfway when i'm on my way in and sort of like i know the names of the bosses and everything and sometimes there's a bit of a pain having a memory like that because nothing ever feels fresh again yeah but it's been a few months and there's um some things that you know Jump out yet? Like I don't know whether it's a um, an, what do you call it um, an SSE thing, but um, the dragon, uh, the bone dragon that's in uh, Labyrinthian, mm-hmm. he doesn't die the first time you kill him. Oh really? Maybe yeah, that he is goes back. Thing. Huh? You got to kill him three or four times before he dies. Oh wow! Hmm. 
which is I don't know whether it's an SSE thing or it's just a fault with my bloody game. Oh, mm. and I think I was I played the SSV version for the last round table, I think. And I was um I said I only had four mods on and I said I had the kept on getting that problem with the combat music starting at different places and never turning off. Hmm. And I thought it was uh, one of those mods, but it, it's happened a few times in in my playthrough, and this is completely unmodded. It's completely vanilla. I haven't even touched a single thing with a mod, so I think it's actually in the SSE game. It's not a mod problem. In uh, So if anybody's having that um, uh, problem with your SSV version and it's modded, don't go looking for the fault in the mod, because I think it's actually in the game. Actually, the game itself, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I haven't noticed that. Well, I, I, I don't think I've noticed that off to uh, play I used to play with attention. music off anyway, so it, mm. it doesn't... Uh, I wouldn't oh, yeah, have noticed. Yeah, you wouldn't notice yeah. it that way, yeah. Yeah, because um, it, it'll start, I mean, the combat music will start, and then like you know, either that fight will end, and then the music will carry on, and then you'll get in caught, and then you'll be like, oh, well, hopefully it'll go away in a minute or something like that. And then you get involved in another fight, and then a new set of combat music starts. So then you got two different sets oh, of geez. combat music playing at different <laughs> times. And then you'll have the background music going off as well. So I just, like, shut it down, sort of, like, get out, come back in again, yeah. and, it, and it fixes it. So. That's, <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a mess. Uh, a mess of yeah. noise. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, you mentioned uh, Dragon Shouts. Yeah, so I'm using the character I used for um, uh, the Dark Brotherhood playthrough, which didn't go into the Dragon Quests at all. Um, but when I went to the Valley of Peace, uh, there was a dragon there that I killed, and I was able to get a Dragon Soul. <laughs> so I I have I'm able to use uh I used it for Throw Voice, which actually worked out well for me um, in the Gray Cal uh, mod. Uh, using throw a voice and sneaking and moving people around. Uh, so I'm able to use a shout without ever starting anything with the dragons at all um, from coming across a dragon in a mod. <laughs> so That's cool. Yeah, so it worked out in my favor accidentally, and I, I didn't even realize it. I, I yeah. just remembered that. Yeah, I was like, this is very handy. Because uh, yeah, there was one area where it had uh, it, Cold Harbor in uh, the mod, you have to go through and there's all kinds of you know things you have to sneak past and all and and i can get them moving around pretty well and you get a bonus if you sneak through without killing anything huh. so i uh i'm able to move them around pretty good with the you know throw a voice shout but i only have the first level of it so you know i don't usually get skeever but i usually get hello or something like that so <laughs> it just takes longer to recharge basically have you ever tried using Mage Light for that? Uh, yeah, I've I have, but I don't have it. I have Candlelight and not Mage Light. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Otherwise, that would be great to use. Um, I need to get it. I keep forgetting to go up to the college and get it, or go somewhere and get it. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I have I have Candlelight, but I don't have Mage Light because that that would be super helpful too. Um, because there were just areas I I needed to get past. And have people move around out of that area so I can get yeah. by them. But um, yeah, the shout shout came in handy, and it's that's one of my favorite shouts too. If, if you're sneaking like an archer or anything like that, that's uh, sort of voice is very worthwhile. Yeah, the one I've been using is um, uh, Aura Whisper. Oh yeah, that's a great one too. Yeah, that's I used that a lot back in the day. Mm -hmm. Especially sniping. Oh, gosh. Light people up in the dark, and you can see them. That's very nice. <laughs> I haven't used that in quite a while. Now that you mention it, I'm going to have to... My next playthrough, I'm going to have to... I'm going to change characters. Check that out. Oh, also the uh, uh, alteration spell, uh, Detect Dead, for when you're looting bodies that you can't find because they're lost in long grass. <laughs> oh, I never yeah. thought about using it for that. It's awesome. Yeah, because usually you use that for the undead, right? Mm-hmm. But if you but kill if... someone, you can still find them. Yep. I never thought about doing that. I never even I, considered I that. bodies all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if they go flying, all, lots of times they just go flying, and you're like, where where did he go? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> 
that's a I've never even thought about using it for that. It never even crossed my mind. <laughs> oh, got to think a little better next time. <laughs> um, so uh, all of us have well, two of us have played Legends. Two of us have tried and quit. <laughs> but uh we, we do have some feedback from todd on it um let me see if i can pull it up here and you guys can hopefully weigh in on today skyrim addicts there we go. this is todd back once again with not an update today on kiana the arrow sworn um i think like most of us my summer schedule has gotten fairly hectic and now that my youngest son has started football it's even more hectic um my, so I haven't been able to really dedicate the time to Skyrim right now to play. Because if I don't have at least three hours of game time, uh, I don't like to get into it that much. Um, excuse me. I'm fighting kind of a sore throat this morning. My apologies. But a couple of weeks ago, uh, finally, Elder Scrolls Legends released on Android. And I've been able to squeeze in a little bit of time to play that here on my tablet in the past couple of weeks. And I thought I'd talk about my impressions of the game. And as I've clawed my way to level 23, and maybe give some tips for some of those who are trying, maybe haven't quite uh, got as far as I have yet, or uh, maybe just try to help you out a little bit. So I've managed, like I said, to get myself to level 23 my collection is still not huge my card collection um because i did enjoy the game i did break down and i bought some of the starter packs um there was i think total they totaled about 12 dollars uh, you got a bunch of the new heroes of skyrim packs and you got some starter packs and a couple of legends um it wasn't really anything super exciting but when I like these free-to-play games, I don't mind giving some money to the developer. Um, I'm thinking about actually buying flat out the Dark Brotherhood story that's on here as well, uh, rather than getting using gold to buy it. But to start, um, I would say the story mode. The story is actually very interesting. Um, it takes place during the Great War, and uh, basically involves you liberating uh, your character, liberating um, Cyrodiil from the Thalmor. And so it's really interesting, and it's kind of a neat story, and uh, it's kind of nice to see that background, you know, if you're interested in the, the lore and the stories uh, behind the, the world itself. Excuse me. Um... I would recommend before you do anything else, completely finish the story. Um, I think before you can do a whole lot, you have to finish the story. But you get a lot of great cards that give you basic starter decks as you go. Um, you'll put some levels on. <coughs> Pardon me. And um, by the time you're done, um, I can't remember exactly what level you might be at. But you definitely want to finish that first before you try getting into anything else. Um, your avatar, when you start the game, uh, can actually be changed at any time. Uh, you can go into your profile and change that. Um, one thing to note, because they're very um, undescriptive about what the avatars do... Uh, as you level up with that avatar, if you pick, say, um, an Argonian, you will get Argonian cards as you level up. So you want to probably start out with something that you're going to want to get cards for uh, that uh, particular race. If you pick a Nord, you'll get Nord cards. So at level 24, though is when you really need to start really worrying about it. Um, because I think at level 24, there's another level higher up that I can't remember. You get legendaries based on your avatar. Um, I actually changed my avatar uh, to an Imperial uh, as I fought my way to level 24 because uh, you get legendary cards, or you get a chance at a legendary card. Um, 
some of them only have uh, a couple of choices, some of them have more choices, and it's random. Um, but I wanted a shot at General Tullius. Whoops, so I had myself muted. <laughs> um, is it, so did you guys go through the uh, main story thing first? Uh, did you take that strategy, or did you go about it differently? Or I'm still working on the whole me or is that you what's that the echo oh i oh, don't know it's gone okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right um i've been going through the story um i just like he said i just started not too long ago and basically if i'm not at home and i can't play um on my pc or my or my xbox that's when i play it so um just do one one part of the chapter at a time uh, i think my character is maybe level seven or eight right now uh or it's level six i think um it's kind of interesting you get cards and uh, at the end of certain battles you have a choice of to either um you can either like follow or execute or it gives you two choices and depending on the choice you pick you get you get a different card and each card does something different so that's kind of interesting so um, is, this, is the story mode strictly against the computer, or do you play against other it's, players? It's well? strictly it's strictly against the computer. Yeah. Um, but the computer sometimes would just tear you a new one real real easy. Yeah. <laughs> they they drop they drop some cards where uh, I was in a battle where the card um, it they had the card there and then they would hit me and it would heal them at the same time. Hmm. Um, so eventually. I was down to I had maybe nine hit points left on on my avatar, and the computer was like over thirty, and we both started at thirty. So I was like, oh. and I ended up losing, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I've learned that um, at least when I'm playing against the computer, I need to destroy a lot of their top cards first, uh, whatever they have on the table, because that is where they usually. Uh, kill me and uh sometimes when you find them a second time the strategy changes because it does some virtual shuffle hmm interesting so let's see all right sorry i had to find the window yes. i need it yeah <laughs> there you are <laughs> um i was gonna say yeah the you definitely want to go through the story mode first as i said i think you have to go through it um but yeah you uh, when you finish a certain chapter of the story it'll give you these really powerful cards and i think you've seen it in the facebook group uh tier uh he, one of the legendary cards you get given legendary cards as you go through so the the chapter so yeah definitely go through that i've played through the dark brotherhood as well i, I shelled out the the 15 or 16 pound it was for that um that was a lot of fun and you get some really great cards from it as well the only problem with it was is that to get those cards you have to play through the dark brotherhood oh, okay so even if those cards they're in the shop but you can't buy them because they're a dark brotherhood exclusive so mm. you have to be able yeah. to play th you have to play through that uh story mode first to be get given those cards and some of them are really like you know you can set out your deck and based on those cards can get very, very powerful. Hmm. Um, do, they, do they still have the thing where you get the, the special mount in Elder Scrolls if you if you play the um, Dark Brother? Yeah, but, yeah, but that only uh, affects PC version. Ah, okay. You can only, you can only get it if, the, if it's for PC. You can't get it for Xbox One. I tried. That's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, yeah, the, I tried entering the code into Xbox and it wouldn't work and I checked it online and yeah, everybody tried it for Xbox and it was like, you know, oh no, it's it's a PC exclusive. Mm. Uh, that was Sounds giant like a bait and switch to me. <laughs> um, was it, I'm currently level what where am I? Damn I've lost myself. There we go, level thirty seven. Um, I've got a few, uh, I've done, there's different quests you can do. You get given a daily quest 
that you can store up to three. So you get one a day. And if you don't complete it in that day, you'll still get another one the next day. And then if you don't complete the two of them by the next day, you'll still get another one after that. And then the three are held there and you can delete them and get a new one. So if it's something that you can't complete, like mm-hmm. it's a it's a deck that you don't have, like there's some ones where it's win three games with a, a green and purple deck. Okay. And if you if you have a really crappy green and purple deck, then and you can't win three games with it, and that includes three games against the computer or three games against people. Hmm. So as long as you then you get given uh, gold, and hmm. then you can go to the shop and buy some really good decks for hmm. in-game gold, so they're completely free. Wow. Right. So you can buy a deck um, like a like a little packet of ten cards. I think it's 10 or is it six no six cards for 100 gold but don't yeah. do that save yeah. your gold up for save your gold until you get 500 gold and then you can get by these skyrim exclusive ones where you get legendary cards like parthenax and alduin brynjolf astrid cicero so wow. you want you want to buy a gold one card is really nice especially yeah. later on yeah, but have you seen the, his cost? Uh, it, I heard it's ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, it's naturally, it, the maxim, uh, without having cards that uh, add to it, you can only have a maximum of 12 Magicka. And the cost of an, uh, uh, to lay down Alduin is 20. <laughs> so you have to either have loads of cards that gives you buffs, your maximum Magicka, which means loads of Argonians, or you got to play an all dragon deck because for every dragon that's in your discard pile, reduce the cost of Alduin. So you right. have to have loads of dragons gone out there and died. It's basically like the, the battle at the throw of the world. So the more dragons in your deck that get gets killed, your anger uh, Alduin gets, and the cheaper he becomes, and then you can bring him in for like, you know, twelve cost or something like that. Mm. Wow. I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll continue on here. Uh, before you do, well, I yep, I gotta go. All right. So um, it's great talking to you guys. It's good and, talking to you. Uh, I will uh, hopefully uh, next time you do one, I'll I'll pop onto that too. Yeah, yeah. Figure so. like two weeks after after the final vacation of summer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, a little tear. The end yeah. of summer. <laughs> I'm All right, still y'all. <laughs> take care, Victor. All right, take care, Hi, Victor. Victor. Nice talking, talking to you again. again. Good talking to you, Colin. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Yeah, I'm still trying to go through all the beer that they left here after uh, Podfest. So, <laughs> <laughs> we don't... sadness. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's, it's a rough <laughs> life over here. I tell you, uh, <laughs> it's it's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, getting a little more Todd's feedback. Switched over to an Imperial Avatar for the moment. Um, I believe your levels max out at 50, um, if I'm not mistaken. They're... uh, Breton, I remember. um, I think they're one of the more recommended... Um, if you're not sure where to go with that, because their legendaries are good, um, they have some of the better legendary cards that you will pull when you level up. So if you're completely unsure of you know like what you want, just go with Britain. It's a pretty good idea. Um, I would recommend uh, not doing what I did and coming from a, a tabletop uh, card miniature gaming background i really enjoy drafting um which if you're not completely familiar with that that's where you usually sit down with like other people in a tabletop game and you open up like a pack of cards or a pack of say miniature figures you pick one you pass it around right and then you play with that and try to win the arenas in Elder Scrolls Legends are exactly that, except, I mean, you don't pass them to other players, but they give you a selection of three cards, and you try to build decks from that. You build a 30-card deck, 
um, from those selections. It's 150 gold uh, to enter. Uh, and while the rewards are really are pretty decent, even if you get a few rewards, until you get a really good grasp of the game, uh, which a few weeks in, I'm still you know trying to get it down. Um, I wouldn't recommend paying the gold on it. I would recommend saving your gold, uh, and, which is what I wish I would have done. I would have had so much more. I think I've played like I've probably wasted a thousand of gold on arenas. Um, you, the better value when you're starting out is the starter decks in the store. Um, now, I think when you finish the story, I believe they give you one of those new Skyrim starter decks at random. I ended up with ALS Companions, which is a good deck um, to start with, you know. And obviously, they're not like, you know, really finely tuned decks or anything, but they give you a good card selection. Uh, there's four more. There's Encano's Cunning, Parthenax's Roar, Alduin's Apocalypse, and Brynjolf's Heist. Um... I have seen a lot of people recommend those first three, Alduin, Parthenax, and Encano, uh, especially Parthenax and Encano. I've never really seen anyone recommend Brynjolf's Heist. <coughs> but even looking at it, I can see that there's some decent cards in it that would not be bad to add to your collection. Now, they're 500 gold apiece. Um, and so I, I would highly recommend just getting those first. Uh, build your card collection. This game is uh, they are very generous uh, with the gold and the stuff that they will give you. Um, more so, I actually played Hearthstone for a while, uh, last year, actually, last summer, uh, when my game time uh, dropped again for, like, Skyrim. And other Xbox games, I was playing Hearthstone. But I just couldn't get into it because I just... I, I, I used to play World of Warcraft and stuff. Maybe it was just, I don't know. This, the setting didn't speak to me anymore. Uh, so it just it, it wasn't that interesting. I played it for a couple of weeks and then dropped it. Um, I'm stuck on this. Uh, just uh, Maybe it's just my love of Skyrim and just Bethesda stuff, I guess, in general. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. But I recommend that. As you get gold... Buy the pre-made decks. Um, they'll expand your card collection to where you can have more options to build your own decks or just, you know, tune those starter decks uh, to add better cards as you get them and do better things. Um, unless you're really confident in yourself, just stick to casual matches. Um, every three victories, you'll get stuff. You'll get a card, and you get so much gold. Um, can't remember exactly offhand what it is, or if it's like a variable amount. So, uh, <clears throat> how's that strategy fit? Like what you guys are doing so far? Our strategy? <laughs> <laughs> I have no strategy because this is my <laughs> first experience with um, with the tabletop like, or with yeah, card with, yeah with card type game. I mean, I, I played Pokemon in the past, but mm -hmm. it's nothing like this because I didn't play Pokemon with the cards. I played it on on the um, uh, what do you call it uh, the, on the Game Boy. Oh, okay, yeah. So it's a little bit different. Um, so I am learning as I go along right now. And I did happen to get the, um, uh, what do you call it, the Brynjolf deck. Mm. Um, I don't know if they actually, like, gave it to me, because I honestly don't remember buying it, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think that you get a free deck when you sign in, I believe. Okay. So I think that's what happened to me. But, yeah, that's pretty much... Exactly. I those versus games that he's talking about. I don't. I've tried a couple of those, and yeah, he's definitely right. Until you get your your decks fine tuned and you're happy going in, um, so there's a few things you can do. You can either play story mode, um, and you can replay the story mode fights, 
and get um, st- uh, soul gems. Or you can do, was it practice matches? So they're just normal matches against you versus the computer, and the computer will randomly generate uh, an enemy with and randomly generate what decks they're going to use. And you can have numbers, like, you know, you get loads of different types of decks. So you have green decks, which is like kind of sneaky. Uh, so you'll have a lot of Khajiit in now. Uh, who are, and if you're a Khajiit, all the little character cards, usually a Khajiit will either like to move about, so they'll move from one lane to a different lane, hmm. or they have Pilfer. And what Pilfer means is that if you hit the enemy player with a Pilfer, it can steal either life, it can steal Magicka, or it can add. There's one legendary card that I've got, which is uh, uh, she's a Khajiit. And if she hits the op- opposing player, um, she uh, she has a base side of four strength and four defense. And then if she hits the base player, she gains four strength and four health, and yeah, has drain. That yeah, and then ha- and also has drain. So four health gets taken off the opposing player, and you gain four health. And then so the next time you hit the opposing player with her, it's going to be eight. So and then she increases that by another eight. So it just keeps on going up exponentially, and literally you can sort of like wipe a player out by hitting her with this particular card three times. Mm-hmm. And then in the, also in the same deck, in the green deck, you have a Savage Strike, which gives the one character can hit again and then again. So if you have three of savage strikes in your deck and her you can wipe out a player in three in one single move hmm. she's an absolute monster but you gotta have a drop um so the one of my favorite decks is the green purple deck uh i think it works really well it's very easy to sort of like get right the other really good one i think is uh blue and green deck and blue has got a lot more magicka and a lot more Bretons in it. And Bretons like to cast wards on themselves and on other people. And, it, and most Bretons, that when they lose their ward, basically the ward is like, you know, like a ward in Skyrim. Yeah. Uh, if you hit it, it'll only damage the ward. It won't damage the uh, the card or you. Uh, give me one second. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. So... Um, if you have, um, oh, no, sorry, it was the blue purple deck, not the blue green, blue purple, because purple deck has got a lot of lethal characters in it. So it doesn't matter what their power is, they're lethal. So they hit another, um, enemy card, it kills it instantly. It doesn't matter what power it has. So if you have lots of Bretons, you can put a ward on them and then attack a creature that does, you know, 11 damage and they only do one damage they just hit it once that uh creature dies and your character is completely fine because it was protected by a ward hmm. so well, that makes sense uh, yeah, you are and sort of like you can have you have to have a minimum of 50 cards in your deck you can only have three of the same card Okay. Of the of all the cards apart from the unique legendary ones. If it's a unique legendary, you can only have one in your deck. Mm. So of all your cards, you can you only ever need three of them. And if you get more cards, you can sell them. So if you have four of the same card, you, uh, you can sell the fourth one for soul gems. Okay. So it'll just disappear and then replace it with a soul gem. And then you can go into the store and buy individual cards with the soul gems. They cost a, a crap ton of soul gems, and you'll like you know you'll sell a normal card for five soul gems, but to buy one costs a hundred soul gems. Ah, uh, okay. So that's how so, you that that's how you use your extra cards in order to improve your deck, essentially. Yep, so you'll find a card that you have, and it's really like that Savage Strike one I was telling you about, which yeah. lets the same character strike, strike more than once in the same turn. I only had one of those. But I saved up enough Soul Gems by, uh, by 
selling off all my other cards, my extra cards. And then I bought two more of those cards because you only ever need three. You'll never need any more than that because you can have them in multiple decks. You don't have to have three in this deck and then th another three for that deck. It's the same three cards. So you don't have to worry about that. Oh, okay. That makes sense then. So that's, that makes sense. Like, like how you <laughs> see, well, at least you're getting a little primer here. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a, a little button that you can press that just says, uh, was it sell all excess cards? And it'll, you just press that button and it sells all your extra cards. It'll never sell all of them. It'll only sell the ones that you have four or more of. And it'll okay. only sell, make sure that you always have three. It'll never sell the three that you need. Well, that definitely okay. seems like a nice feature so you don't have to go through your entire deck to see what you have more <laughs> of. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, like, so you can have more than 50 if you want. Again, uh, yeah, I can have, um, you have to have a minimum of 50 okay. to a maximum of 70 in the deck. Okay. Um, so, like, let's say you're in a battle and, like, all 50 run out. Does it just reshuffle what you've thrown out or you're done? Actually, that happened to me a little while ago. Well, it nearly happened to me, but he killed me before I got to it. was saying <laughs> that my, well, I was coming to the end of my deck. It was getting close, but it, it's never actually happened to me yet, so I'm not 100% sure. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. Cause that, yeah, I don't know, I don't know enough whether about it, you, that style I, gaming. Yeah, I think you might actually run out of cards, I think, and just get yeah. left there without no cards. Yeah, I like the ones that like automatically... Um, uh, can be played um, after you lose five points. You know how if you lose five points, it draws a card for you? Yeah, that's called a, a prophecy card. But yeah, the prophecy cards. I like those. <laughs> yeah. So if you have lots of prophecy cards in your deck, um, you'll have, you have um, is it four runes, I think? You have start with 30 health, and if you go down to zero, then you've lost the game. Mm-hmm. Um, you, I was going to say, there is actually a way of you going down to zero but still winning the game. It's actually an achievement. Because you have cards that will, as you lay them down, will do damage to your opponent as well as, and you as well at the same time. So, like, there's what's it, an, an afflicted ailet. That's one of the cards. And if you lay it down, it deals two damage to each player. So if you're at one point, if you're at two points and he's at one point and you lay down that card, it'll take you down to zero, but take him down to minus one. So you still win the game, even though you went down to zero points. <laughs> and it's an achievement in the, uh, in, well, in the achievements. Hmm. Wow. It's also an achievement to, uh, if you have, uh, get a hundred health. I think it's called the immortal, I think. Oh. Hmm. Because you start off with 30 health, and then you, if you use cards to increase your health more and more, you get to 100 as an achievement. And that gets an achievement. Do the achievements give you anything, or is it just uh No, it's, it's uh, just you a get, simple. It gives you uh, titles. Oh, okay, yeah. So I, the one I'm using at the moment is the Defiant, which is win a game at one health. Hmm. <laughs> at one health yeah i had one and i still won no oh, jesus <laughs> oh man all right let's get into a little more todd here but playing casual matches with other players is a really good way to kind of you know figure out and learn how to play the game uh see other cards in action uh other people you know testing their decks and playing around and messing around um, I've clawed my way, uh, I just started a few days ago trying to get to rank 9 in the actual ranked matches, because at rank 9, 5, and 1, I believe, you'll get a copy of the month's, uh, special card, um, and I think I'm just gonna sit at rank 9, um, it can get very frustrating, uh, that's another thing I would recommend <clears throat> is if you take about three losses in a row, uh, take a break. Uh, don't let yourself get frustrated. Uh, it, it, 
because it's really easy with this game to get frustrated at yourself. You can see the mistakes that you made and just be like, oh, you know, oh, why did I do that? I actually did that just a little earlier uh, in a game. But I wasn't overly concerned. It was casual. I wasn't overly concerned with winning it. Um, I'm just trying to work on some of the quests. Um, I've got a couple of quests sitting right now, you know, to, to get more stuff. I've got one where I can actually get a pack. Uh, so you'll get a quest where you can get packs, and packs are 100 gold. Um, I don't really recommend buying packs uh, with your gold. Uh, you'll probably actually, if you're to that point where you want to buy packs with your gold, I would actually probably recommend playing Arena. Because even if you can get two or three wins in Arena, you're going to get a... I usually get... I can usually get about three wins in one of the arenas, and you'll get two card packs for 150 gold. It's a little more time-intensive than just buying packs, but you also get a bunch of other stuff. You'll get more. You'll get some of your gold back. You'll get soul gems. Oh, soul gems. That's the other thing to touch on. Um, you can actually make your own cards um, with certain amounts of soul gems. Uh, oh, I hit the wrong thing. Get it to open here. Um, and I don't recommend doing this willy nilly. I would uh, research some stuff first. Uh, I can actually uh, maybe give you guys a website. Um, but you can make your own cards. Uh, if you go to your card collection manager and you hit the Soul Site button down at the bottom. That'll actually display all the cards in the game, stuff that you don't have. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find a common. Ah, here we go. Uh, commons will cost you 50. You can get uh, 50 soul gems for a common. And then the next rarity is rare. And that will, well, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. There we go. Uh, let's see, rares will cost you 100, and then there are epics, I think epics are 4, I gotta find one, I have to find an actual epic first, here we go, um, yeah, 400 for an epic, and legendaries, Who boy, uh, they're in the thousands, I'm pretty sure. I saw one. Yeah, I don't have one of those. Uh, Twelve hundred. Yeah. Um, now you can actually destroy excess cards that you get. Um, commons will give you back five soul gems. Uh, rares will give you back twenty. The epic, well, legendaries will give you back four hundred. So you can basically trade a legendary you don't want for an epic. <laughs> I think. Epics will give you back a hundred, yeah. Uh, don't blow those either, like I did. Um, I would save those if, uh, especially if you decide to start doing some research and you know maybe figuring out what some of the better cards to have in your collection are for deck building. Um, I had quite a few and I blew them all in a. Uh, blew a bunch of them at one time to try to put a deck together and I kind of wish that I hadn't because the deck is actually kind of outdated um, now that Heroes of Skyrim is out but I still have some fun I still have fun with it like I said and I clawed my way to rank 9 with it from out of 12 so uh, that's alright um, but you can earn soul gems up to 300 a day by going into play, you can go to practice battles, and this is these are battles against uh, the computer. You can play on novice, adapter, expert. Um, novice will give you five soul gems if you win. Adept will give you ten. Expert will give you fifteen, and you can earn up to three hundred a day by doing that. Um, and it's just a, a way to tune your deck against the AI. Now I'll tell you this: um, it, novice is easy. Adept is what it sounds like, it's a medium in the road. An expert can be pretty hard. Um, playing against computers is not quite as easy as uh, I've 
seen some people make it sound. I think they've actually made it more difficult um, in patches and updates to the game than what it used to be. Uh, doing some YouTube research, it seemed like it was pretty easy. I was trying to put together just a, a common, easy deck to farm soul gems. I haven't been able to really farm soul gems. Um, it's not quite as easy as they made it sound. Um, there is a website. Um, hold on, give me one second here. Um, I found a couple of really decent, oh, Twitch drops. Let me tell you about that, too. Um, I discovered that you can... And they just started this uh, back in July, right before the Android release. There are Twitch drops. Um, and what that is, is you can go onto Bethesda.net, uh, Bethesda.net, uh, log into your account, and go to your account manager. It may even be on the front page of their website on our regular computers. I do everything on my tablet, so it's it comes up a little different on my tablet. Um, uh, there's a, uh, a, a connection thing. You can link to Xbox Live, um, which I had already done, but now you can link your account to Twitch. Um, when Whoops, I keep forgetting to turn my mic on. Uh <laughs> I start talking and keep forgetting that I have switched my mic off. <laughs> uh, Juan thinks I'm putting horrible things in the in the Facebook comments, which I'm not. <laughs> I'm just asking Dale about his beer. Uh, so, uh, oh gosh, uh, d have you done any of the connecting it to other other services and all that to get the extra stuff, or or, or is that worthwhile, or is it just? Uh, each to each his own kind of thing. Um, no, I, I uh, basically I've just played the the story, and that's about all I've done with it. Yeah, same here. I haven't. Um, I mean, I didn't even know about the um, what you might call it the, um, the the Twitch thing. Was it Twitch? Did he say or Twitter? Yeah, Twitch. Yep. Yeah, no, I didn't even know about that. So, but I just, um, I don't uh, sell any of my um, legendary guys. The only ones I do sell uh, from the the soul gems ones is the um, uh, is is the ones that I have four or five of. I never sell uh, until I get three of a card. I never start selling them. Okay, so yeah, you don't sell them until you already have the max you can have of them, and then just sell the yep. extra. Yeah. Yeah, then I sell the others. Yeah, just in case it's sort of like you know, it'll become a, an integral part of a deck that I'm going to come up with later on. Um, because uh, some of the ones are really fun. You, you can swap to a different one, and it's gonna it's like a lot of fun. Like um, like uh, the red deck has got uh, a lot of Nords in it, and be they, some of the Nords have beast form like uh, Ayla. So one. You lay them down, and they they're like a, a three three character, so they have three strength and they got three defense. Um, but if you break one of the runes on your uh, on your opponent, so you and the runes are you have thirty health. If you go below twenty five health, it breaks a rune. And then when you hit twenty health, it breaks another rune. And um, once one of those breaks, they, the Nords get beast form, so they transform into a werewolf, okay. and it increases their stats. Uh, the, the really good one, is, a really good card, is the Nord. As a, as a, it's a, a white run guard, hmm. and he has beast form. And he has, I think he's just a normal, um, I think it's a 3-5 a card. So he's got 3 attack and then 5 defense. But then when he goes beast form, he becomes, I think it's a 5-7 card and has guard. So that means that enemies can't, they have to hit him. So they can't hit any other card other than him and they can't hit you. They have to go through him first. 
So here's a die before they can start hitting your 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 character your <laughs> yourself at thirty health. And this is only in the in the lane where he's where he is, right? Yes. I think uh, that's although something we haven't talked about is the fact that there is like two lanes. Yes, there's two lanes, and they have like uh, special conditions on it. So uh, the lane on the left, which is sort of like the field lane, is basically you put a card down, and then from that card you either attack the opposing um, cards or you attack the player. And then you've got the shadow lane. If you uh, place a card here for the first round, it is in shadow. It's sneaking in. It's trying to sneak its way through. So it cannot be attacked by the player with an opposing card. It can still be attacked with an action card. So you have cards which are creatures, and then you've got cards which are actions, which is basically like a spell. So you can cast a fireball at it. Or like a crushing blow is basically you throw a beer bottle at it, um, and then there's other cards like um, uh, equipment. So you have weapons and stuff like that that you can lay on top of character cards to give them equipment, so they can give them a uh, like an orcish warhammer, which is a which is a pretty good one. Um, what can I say? Um, I, there's a really good legendary card. And uh, it's the one I'm looking to try and get if I can. I'm going to have to save up quite a lot of soul gems for it, though, is the Lydia card. <laughs> <laughs> and the Lydia card is awesome because she blocks both lanes. Ah, she, wow. she has card, uh, she has guard, and she blocks both lanes. So even if they come in the shadow lane or in the field lane, they have to kill Lydia before they can get to you, <laughs> which, is, which is true. Yep. Well, that's a good card to have then. <laughs> she is the greatest house Carl ever. Yep. Yeah, it's true. It's true. That's, that's a given. That's a that's given. A given. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously she is a legendary card. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, she is probably the most famous follower in uh, Skyrim, I would think. Yeah, definitely. Stop playing with your spinner one. You've got a fidget spinner. <laughs> no, it's uh, um, a little claw that takes out hooks from fish. <laughs> <laughs> Leave uh, that fish alone. <laughs> oh man! All right. Well, we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap up this episode so we can. Uh, we're recording two today, and we're gonna get into the Oblivion one next. But uh, we'll have the rest of Todd's feedback right after this, right after we wrap up here. So. Uh, Thanks for listening. Uh, you can find all the shows over at asapodcasting.com. The uh, Fallout feed is doing the New Vegas roundtable, um, what they just did the draws for it, I yep. believe. Um, yeah. Last episode. Yeah, so so they started the uh, New Vegas one. Uh, we're going to be starting Oblivion here in probably uh, September, it sounds like, once we settle on some dates and stuff. But we're going to go through that next episode and... Uh, uh, and uh, stay tuned for uh, the rest of uh, Todd's feedback about uh, Legends. And then uh, next episode, we have uh, obviously, like we said, more of mostly Oblivion talk. So, all right, everyone, thanks for listening. Uh, people watching live, we're not going anywhere. <laughs> 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 and uh, take care. Later, guys. Good day. Night, afternoon. <laughs> Depending on when you're listening to this. <laughs> oh, let me hit play on that feedback. Hold on. I almost stopped the recording. That would have been bad because I don't have my place. Here we go. Link your account to Twitch if you get onto Twitch and you watch people play. Uh... Now, I don't know if it's just Elder Scrolls Legends or if it's all Bethesda Net games or Bethesda games, but if you you watch it, you will get drops for the Elder Scrolls Legends. Um, or if you stream, if you stream, or if you watch someone else's stream, um, you can get a drop. They'll give you gold. Uh, they'll give you soul gems. Uh, they'll give you packs of cards. Uh, and then you log into the game, and uh, it automatically gives it to you when you log into the game. Um, so that's, uh, I think, really neat. Um I'm trying to find a website. I'm so sorry. I should have. Ah, here we go.
I had it up on my phone, but I record on my phone, and I didn't want to. Uh, I don't know what minimizing my recorder uh, on my phone would do. Uh, Legends-Dex.com is a really great uh, website resource. Um, you can also, they have a deck builder. Um, you could track your collection and kind of get on there and maybe deck build and stuff uh, through there. Uh, a lot of people have uh, save decks. There's you know strategy articles, uh, just news about the game in general. It's a really, really good website. So that oh, it's wrong. Just trying to bring the game back up. That is really about all I have for today. Um, uh, yeah. So save your money, stay away from Arena for a while, buy the pre-made decks, um, look into the legend, uh, make sure that your avatar is one that you really want. Um, when you start, when you get ready to hit level 24. Before level 24, not a huge deal. Um, but it's it's a fun game. And if, if anybody wants to chat with it, you know, uh, send me a message on Facebook if you want to chat about the game uh, or anything like that. Just, you know, feel free to, to message me over Facebook. I'd be happy to talk about it. It's, uh, it's a really fun game, and I've really enjoyed it. Um, I like sitting down and playing something competitive once in a while. Um, not all the time. Obviously, sometimes I just want to play Skyrim and just play by myself and, you know, uh, tell myself a story. But once in a while, I like the I, I like the competitive nature of something and just kind of, you know, uh, compete with other people, see how well I can do. Um, but don't 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 let it get don't let it get to you. Don't get frustrated over it. It's um, there's just a, there are a lot of people out there who are just sometimes naturally better at these things, and uh, you know, or they understand the concepts sometimes a little bit better and easier than uh, you might take to or I take to. Um, I'm still trying to figure some of this stuff out. Um, it's 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 a very different animal, but it is a lot of fun. Uh, it can be a lot of fun. But again, even like Skyrim, it is what you make of it. Um, you can make your own fun out of it. But I, I got to tell you, I, I, I give the game a good five stars. They are very generous. You really don't have to spend a dime on the game if you don't want to. Um, you can save up for it and just in, save up for the things and really just enjoy it. Um, all righty. Well, um, sorry. I kind of trailed off there at the end. Um, I had had a brain fart. But uh, thanks again uh, for listening. I appreciate it. And thank you again, Michael. And we'll see you next time.